Fox Sports. We are We are Minnesota. For 25 years, your home for Minnesota Twins baseball. Dear old dad, thousands of fathers have found their way to Target Field to take in the Twins' tilt with the Tigers in the Father's Day finale against Detroit, and we have a picture-perfect afternoon for baseball. Detroit will close out this series by sending Doug Fister to the mound this afternoon. P.J. Walters returns for the Twins, coming off a quality start after giving up one earned run in seven in the third innings against the Phillies last Tuesday. Well, thanks to last night's 6-3 victory here against the Tigers, the Twins in position to take their second series against Detroit this season. And boy, did Samuel Deduno set the table perfectly last night. He had a beautiful start last night, deep into the ball game, seven innings. And so for Samuel Deduno to throw strikes with his fastball, to throw strikes with his curveball was huge last night. He's showing a lot more confidence on the mound as a Minnesota Twins starter. We also celebrated a homecoming of sorts. The birthday boy, Trevor Plouffe, with the big night last night, coming off of a stint on the DL. He had three hits, a home run, and he played some solid defense. He celebrated his birthday in a very, very, very big way. And we also had some defense. You know, you can go a couple of weeks without having a play at the plate or recording it out at home plate. Last night, the Twins had two of them, and it's always exciting to record that out at home plate. It's exciting for the fans, and, well, look, it's pretty exciting for your starting pitcher, too. He got pretty wound up about it, so big, big night for the Twins last night. Hey, can the Twins tame the Tigers on Father's Day? Much of that will depend on the start they receive from P.J. Walters. Dick and Burt return next with more on the matchup on the mound this afternoon.
Sports North is presented by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. On a day meant to honor fathers weather-wise, a day meant for baseball. The final game of this three-game series between the Twins and the Tigers. And some kids enjoying a day at the park with their fathers. P.J. Walters, who may have given the Twins their most important start of the year in Detroit, ending a 10-game losing streak, will make the start here today against his mound opponent that day, right-hander Doug Fister of the Detroit Tigers. And we welcome you to Target Field, and yes, happy Father's Day to everybody, happy. including you. Well, thank you, and you too. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Twins hope to win this series against the Detroit Tigers, and they'll be taking on Doug Fister, who's a very good pitcher. Incredibly, with this Tiger lineup, he has been the victim of poor run support. Yeah, Doug Fister is making an appearance here this afternoon, and he would like to have some run support. Only four runs by the Tigers in his last four starts, 0-3. Don't let the record fool you. This guy can pitch. Very solid right-handed pitcher. He's had some success against the Twins. Very low ERA, but he's 3-7 and seven in his career. I don't know if you can overvalue what P.J. Walters did the last time he faced the Tigers. Well, P.J. Walters making his fifth start, and they have all basically been quality starts. He started that game against Fister in Detroit when the Twins were on that 10-game losing streak. He and Samuel Duduno have lit some fire into the starting rotation for the Twins. Three three-game series in this homestand. The Twins won the series against the Phillies. They hope to this afternoon win the series against the Tigers. For every David, a Goliath. For every Hatfield, a McCoy. Every Doyle Alexander, a Gary Gaetti. He's going for number two. It's way back. It's out of here. Every Miguel Cabrera, a J. 
Joe Maurer. Every rivalry needs epic battles. Ground ball right side. Got a sneak through. In order to finish first, somebody has to finish second. I hate second. They win the American League Central. Love your rivals because you need someone to beat. And make no mistake about it, Detroit is the team to beat in the American League Central. We have a sellout crowd here on Father's Day, an absolutely gorgeous Sunday afternoon. And wherever you are, we are very thankful that you uh, decided to spend at least part of your Father's Day with Twins Television. Jim Leland, hoping his team can win the series with this Menards batting order. Austin Jackson in the leadoff spot, Tory Hunter batting second. Miguel Cabrera, Prince Fielder, Victor Martinez, Johnny Peralta, Andy Dirks, Omar Infante, and Alex Avila. And on the mound this afternoon, it'll be P.J. Walters making his fifth start, his second against the Tigers. We already highlighted his previous start on May 24th in Detroit. Three of, of his four starts have been quality starts so far, and that's what he's looking for again here this afternoon. Jackson, Hunter, and Cabrera here in the Tiger first. The ball now a strike. And already Walter the pace that uh, he has really come up with and really I think set a fire him and Daduno the way that they go about their business throw strikes attack and uh, it's it's been really a godsend through the starting rotation because up until the middle of May the starting rotation was really struggling way too many short starts extremely short starts two and one and now three and one and uh, what makes it even odder is the fact that both Walters and Deduno were taken off the 40 man roster. The Twins had to make room for them to get them on the 40 man roster and bring them up with the big league club. Three and one. Fouled away three and two. Well, it's good about Walters, too. Only six walks and 25 and a third innings coming into this ballgame. Not a lot of strikeouts. 14 walks in the 25 and a third. He will make the opponent put the ball in play and utilize a very good defense behind him. And he's allowed only one home run. Full count. And a foul. James Hoy has the plate this afternoon. Jim Reynolds, John Hirschbeck, Bob Davidson, the base umpires. Twins have an off day tomorrow, and then the White Sox come to town for three. Another 3 2 pitch. And a base hit to left. Good at bat for Jackson to get the game started. Tigers have actually been held in check, even though this series is a tied at a game apiece. The Tigers have only scored in three innings so far in the series. Northland Ford defense for the Twins. Oswaldo Arcia in left. Lee Thomas in center. And Chris Parmalee in right field. Plouffe and Floramone left side of the infield. Dozier, Morno on the right side. Mauer back behind the plate with Domit, the designated hitter. 80 degrees right now. Fairly low humidity. Far cry from when uh, the Tigers and Twins played their first series here in very early April. Inside ball one. Walters also pretty quick home too so there has not been an attempted sto stolen base against him yet. This being a stiff start. Numbers on Torrey Hunter. Jackson with five stolen bases on the year. And there goes Jackson. They pitch out. Mauer's throw oh. nearly took the cap off of Walters. And a stolen base. And that uh, forced Walters to duck out of the way. That was a low throw. On a pitch out right here, you, you know, Jackson takes off right here. Joe has plenty of time to make a good throw. Ooh. And P.J. Walters, watch out. And Florimone had to do everything to try to just catch that little short hop. So a stolen base for Jackson, his sixth of the year. 2-0 to Hunter. And a high fly to deep left field. And Torrey Hunter has put the Tigers up 2 to nothing with his 300th Major League home run. Nice accomplishment from Tor by Torrey Hunter. A two run home run. And puts the Tigers up two to nothing. 
Fastball middle in. Torrey opening up quickly and hitting it into that left field. Getting hugs all around. In his first season with the Tigers, but he is loved by everybody in that dugout. <laughs> everybody hugging him, even the pitching coach. You know, Torrey hit his 200th major league home run late enough in his career where he had to have some question as to whether he'd get 300. Now here's a flare to right and a base hit for Cabrera and a rough start for P.J. Walters, but a Nice moment for Torrey Hunter. In his 300th home run earlier this year, he got his 2,000th major league hit. Got to play a long time. Gold gloves and 300 home runs or more. Pretty nice company right there with Willie Mays, Ken Griffey Jr., Andrew Jones, and of course the Detroit Tiger All Star great Hall of Famer Al Kaline. Prince Fielder with nobody out and Cabrera at first. That tickles the outside corner. Strike one. Fielder driving in a couple of runs here in Detroit's win on Friday night. Five for 11 with a couple of home runs against Walters. Not the guy you want to face when you're still looking for your first out. Chopper to short. You might get two of them here. Six, four, three, two down. In today's game, we are participating in the home run challenge. Every home run hit in this game, even the ones hit by the Tigers, it raises $20,000 for prostate cancer research. You can make a pledge by going online to homerunchallenge.org. The Twins organization also getting involved to help keep Dad in the game. They'll be donating an additional $10,000 for each home run hit by the Twins this week. And $1,000 for every strikeout by a Twins pitcher. P.J. Walters kicking in another $1,000 for every strikeout he gets. So a lot of money uh, we hope will be raised with the Twins hitting more home runs than the Tigers today. Martinez takes a strike. Since Deduno and Walters were called up, we've seen less and less of what we've seen here in the first inning, where a twin starter gives up some early runs. In fact, first inning runs that kind of set the tone for the game. Two strikes. One and two. Well, three straight brace breaking balls to Martinez. Walters with a good moving fastball. The curveball, he'll throw a little slider and a changeup. Fouled back. When Walters made his start against the Tigers in Detroit and ended that 10 game losing streak, he was given an early 3 0 lead. In fact, a 3 0 lead before he threw his first pitch. Now, Doug Fister's got an early 2 0 lead before he throws the first pitch. And that's up the middle, hits the bag, and skips into center field. Fourth hit of the inning. Against P.J. Walters. Now he went back to the breaking ball. And this time Martinez was ready for it. Hit it right back up the middle. The Twins gave up the first two runs in the ball game yesterday, but answered immediately on a blue foam run. 19th pitch of the inning coming up, and Walters will throw it to Johnny Peralta. Foul behind Tom Brookins. Another bouncer behind Brookins, two strikes. Peralta having a very steady season, hitting at 333. Torrey still getting hugs. That might be Wayne Hathaway over there. Holding on a little too long for my comfort <laughs> level. 
Oh, they go way <laughs> back. There's Wayne Hadaway. Yeah. Wayne Hadaway, uh, yeah. what do we call him, the vice president of team morale? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he was in the uh, minor league clubhouses when Torrey first joined the Minnesota Twins. One and two to Johnny Peralta. And Peralta strikes out, and a long first inning comes to a close for P.J. Walters. And Torrey Hunter put Detroit up early, two to nothing. for Torrey Hunter and it's 2-0 Detroit. Twins will try to answer back with this Menards batting order. Lee Thomas will need off spot. Joe Maurer followed by Ryan Domit the designated hitter. Justin Morno, Oswaldo Arcia, Trevor Plouffe, Chris Parmalee, Brian Dozier and Pedro Floromo. And six foot eight Doug Fister on the mound for the Tigers here this afternoon. Very solid starting staff for the Tigers for Fister making his 14th start. His second against the Twins. His first three 13 starts 10 have been quality starts very good 3.28 earned run average. Thomas Maurer and Doman. And a first pitch strike. Fister like Walters will throw strikes only 12 walks in 85 innings pitched for Doug Fister. On the ground sharply to Victor Martinez. One away. Northland for defense for the Tigers. A bit of a different look with Martinez at first. Andy Dirks in left. Austin Jackson in center. Torrey Hunter in right. Miguel Cabrera, Johnny Peralta, Omar Infante, Victor Martinez, the infielders. The Milo back behind the plate. Yeah, Prince Fielder, the designated hitter for Jim Leland here this afternoon, has told uh, Martinez only the third time this season he's played uh, on the field and all at third base. Uh, me, first base. Yeah, his catching days are behind him because of knee issues. Mauer, the batter, delivered a big two run single late in the ball game yesterday, and he takes strike one. Mauer back behind the plate. He was the Twins designated hitter last night. A 415 on base percentage. And Joe seven for 27 lifetime against Fister, a 258 hitter. Mauer second in the league in on base percentage to the Tiger third baseman. One and one. Led the majors in that category a year ago. Two and one. Three and one. I thought Jim Suhan of the Star Tribune had a spot on analysis of the twin situation. And a situation that requires a little patience from uh, everybody as the twins try to get back near the top of the division, but specifically regarding Joe. Whatever the twins' problems are, 
He's not a part of it. Backhanded by the second baseman Infante. Tomorrow, one of the premier players in the game, two down. Dolan coming to the plate. And we talked about this a few moments ago in Detroit. The uh, Twins gave P.J. Walters some early run support. Yeah, three runs early in the ball game for P.J. Walters, and it made it. He made it hold up, beating the uh, Tigers three to two. Here, the Twins hope to answer. Two away in the first inning, and Ryan Dome at the bat. Strike one. Foul, two strikes. Doug Fister, 29 years old, in his third season with the Tigers, got traded over from the Seattle Mariners in 2011 to the Tigers. Last year, 26 starts, had a couple uh, minor injuries, 10 wins, 10 losses. Oh, and two. And a pitch up. Tigers have the top team batting average at 279. The Twins way down, ranking 11th in the American League at 244. One and two. And Martinez gloves it, makes a nice play, flipping to Fister. So Martinez covering the ground at first base, and the Twins go down one, two, three in the first. Target field. Well, PJ Walters has gone at least six innings in each of his four starts this season. And last start, he lasted seven and a third innings, but he is still not satisfied. And after his last start, he told me, I want to go nine innings. I go into each and every game looking to throw nine. So even though he kept the Twins in the ball game and they ended up getting the win that day, he is always looking to improve. And to convert, you have to love that kind of attitude. That's what you want right there. Thank you, Jamie, very much. Walters making his uh, 21st start. He has one complete game that coming last year in Chicago as the Twins beat the White Sox 9 to 2. 2 and 0 oh to Dirks. And that clips the corner 2 and 1. You know, you're going to you're going to have innings that you're going to give up home runs. I, I can attest to that, but it's how you respond to that that inning. And uh, what Walters wants to do right now is put a zero on the board. As Jamie said, you know, all four starts, prior starts, he's gone at least six innings. And that's what the Twins would like for Walters to do here this afternoon. Get deep into the ball game. And there's a ways to go, but I think we've seen the twin starters by and large pitch more innings than they did the first two months. And it's not a coincidence that twins have won more games. They've played better at home. All the things you look for 
uh, in areas of improvement over the course of the season. You're starting to see it in the twin starting rotation. Dribbled up the line and right over the bag for an easy first out. Well, Samuel Daduno gave up a couple runs in the fourth inning, and then Trevor Plouffe, as you mentioned earlier, Dick, hit the two run home run. After that, he was lights out. Seven very good innings. He allowed seven hits, two runs, both of them coming in the fourth. One walk, a couple strikeouts, two 93 pitches. And Daduno won his third game in five starts. One gone, Omar Infante, the batter. The, the simplest way to look at it, I suppose, is Deduno and Walters are here. Liam Hendricks and Vance Worley are in Rochester. There's a high fly to center field, playable for Thomas. Two down. Well, Deduno, since he came up, and he came up, he started the day before Walters did in Detroit. His last four starts outstanding. He's allowed only five earned runs over his last four starts, and he's also won three. And he's kept the ball in the ballpark. No home runs allowed. And how nice was it to see him go seven innings yesterday with just one walk? Mm -hmm. Two down. Here's Avila. It's down the left field line. And a fair ball. A hit for Avila. He's going to try for two. Here's the throw to second base. A little offline. And Avila with a first pitch, two out double. Well, Avila will take all those hits he can because he's really been struggling at the plate. Didn't waste any time. Jumped on that first pitch. Just went the other way. Maybe a little bit off the bat. But with two outs, you'd be aggressive on the base pass and Avila getting into scoring position. For Avila, his fourth double of the year. And a fifth hit off of Walters, first time through the lineup. Down and away, ball one. Jackson just activated before the start of this series, called up from a rehab assignment. He missed about a month with a hamstring pull. And while you can't make any direct uh, comparisons between what Jackson went through missing a month and Aaron Hicks uh, you do need to understand that it varies from player to player and situation to situation there's no guarantee for instance Aaron Hicks will come off the disabled list when the 15 days are up one and one yeah, you, one you can two. have a mild hamstring pull or you can really have a, a hamstring pull sometimes you know guys miss more than a month. But remember a couple of years ago, Alexi Casilla pulled it, came back, pulled it again, right. and then the third time his season was done. It just never really got healthy again. So the Twins want to make sure that Aaron Hicks is ready to go when he uh, comes off the disabled list. Two and two. Walters trying to close up shop here in the second inning with his 36th pitch. Tapper to third. Blue backpedals, has it. And fires across accurately to end the second inning.
Minnesota Twins and Justin Morneau invited 25 military service members and their families to play catch and celebrate Father's Day on the field. Now, this event concluded the third annual Hope Week, where the Minnesota Twins players and front office staff got a chance to take part in an entire week dedicated to giving back to the community. Dick and Bird, I think by all means, this was a big success for the Twins. Yes, uh, absolutely, Jamie. Thank you very much. Justin Morneau leading off the second for the Twins. Strike one. Morno, Arcia, and Plouffe. Not only great baseball players, but also an organization and the players giving a lot back to the community here in Minnesota. What uh, read with interest in the uh, Minneapolis paper today, they rank the best workplaces in uh, Minnesota. The Twins rank, I think, fourth among large corporations in terms of the best place to work and the community spirit that's prevalent in this organization a big reason why it's such a great place to hang your hat foul back by Morneau still one and two it says something about the organization doesn't it that the employees uh, feel so good about uh, where they work oh they sure do it sure does Justin eight hits and 22 at bats against Pister. Two and two trying to get aboard here as the twins hope to get a run or two back here in the second just down two to nothing. And off the plate three and two with RC on deck. Now left handed hitters this year against Doug Fister hitting only 224. Opponents hitting 270 overall right handed hitters actually hitting 315. And lifted foul out of play. Mister has all four pitches a fastball, slider, big curveball, and a changeup. Foul back. And a pitch uh, looked like he could handle, but he fouled it back to the screen. Three two strike fouls from Morno in this second inning at bat. And another foul. Justin with 43 strikeouts, just 19 walks. Justin walked 49 times last year. Career high 76 walks in 2008. A little number in front of the plate. Avila wants it. And fires the first one along at bat. Ends up with a ground out. One down. That'll bring up Arcia. You can be a part of the broadcast by voting for who you think is the Arby's value player of the game. Text value, a space, and the player's last name to 234234. Let us know who you think had the most value in today's game, and we'll tell you the winner in the postgame show. Hundred and fifteen at bats for Arcia. Hitting two seventy, four home runs, fifteen runs batted in. Thirty-one hits, impressively fourteen extra base hits. He has never faced Doug Fister. First meeting here. There are the numbers on the season. Checked his swing. I think we've seen a little bit more of this from Arcia since his uh, recall. Taking a few more pitches, working the count a little bit, even drawing some walks. He's only drawn nine. Three, you know. Teams have learned very quickly that if you make a mistake in the inner half of the plate, you might have to pay the price. Let's see if he has a green light right here. And Fister's only allowed two home runs, one to a lefty, one to a righty. And a good fastball away. Both Walters and Fister working quickly. And now Arcio had a bug to distract him. And that 
Takes the mask off of Avila, three and two. The foul tip. Ripping the mask off of Avila, got him around the left collarbone area. James Hoy taking a little extra time, the home plate umpire, letting Avila shake it off. And a special Father's Day treat for the Detroit catcher. His dad is a baseball executive with the Tigers on this road trip. Three and two to Arcia. And a drive to the left field corner and deep. Dirks chasing it and making a nice running catch right in front of the foul pole. Arcia hitting a long way. Nice running catch by Dirks. He stuck out that right hand right at the last second and able to catch it right near that 339 mark down that left field line. Went a long way for this ball to stay up a little bit. A little hang time allows Dirks. To go into the corner, reaches up, and makes a nice catch. Dirk's got a little bit of a break out of the Tiger lineup. Makes a fine play for out number two. Here's Trevor Plouffe. Let's see if it's Trevor's birthday again. No, he grounds out. Cabrera across to Martinez. A couple of long at bats and another one, two, three inning for Doug Fitton. Presented by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. By Grand Casino, the best stories start here. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, for the everyday competitor in all of us. First pitch, a check swing strike to Torrey Hunter. It was Hunter's two-run home run in the first inning that gave the Tigers the quick lead. They still lead it two to nothing. And another half swing. I think he went. Strike two. The breakdown on Hunter's 300 home runs 192 of them as a twin, 105 as an angel, and now three with the Tigers. Two strikes, Walters to Hunter. And strike three. And strikeout number two for Walters. Let's check in with Jamie Hirsch. Well, Dick and Bird, of course, many people here celebrating Father's Day at the ballpark. And in today's tweet talk, we want to see how you're celebrating with dear old dad. You can use the hashtag Dad's Day and send in a picture of you and dad. Maybe you're watching the game. Maybe you're playing catch in the backyard. Whatever you are doing on this special day, we want to see your picture. So use that hashtag and we'll share our favorites. 
And we're happy to say about 40,000 fans, some of them fathers and sons, enjoying the ballpark here, enjoying the ball game in person. Want to know to Cabrera? 2 0. Cabrera base hit to right field in his first at bat, leading the American League in hitting. Now hitting at 356. Change up over for a strike. Fastball, strike two. Breaking ball, strike three. In a good location right there, Cabrera. Second straight strikeout for Walters, third of the ball game. A strike one with a changeup, strike two with a fastball, and strike three with the breaking ball. Good location down right there, Walters. Good pitch. And two down in the third, and now Prince Fielder. Bounced into a double play his first time up. Suppose uh, it can happen. You would know certainly. Starting pitchers out there, you kind of get a quick wake up call. Single home run, single. And maybe one of the bigger at bats in this game will be Fielder's first at bat against Walters when. Hadn't gotten an out yet. And the guy who's had a pretty good history against him, but Walters got a double play grounder. Yeah, good location of that fastball to create that ground ball out and for the double play in the first inning. And there's the base hit that really would have hurt in the first inning. It comes with two outs here in the third. You can ask a question online at carsoup.com slash baseball rich in Apple Valley. Wondering uh, whether we're surprised that the Tigers are the only team above 500 in the American League Central. Well, Cleveland was on a roll, but then they kind of faltered a little bit. But uh, no, I'm not surprised with the pitching staff that the Tigers have, starting staff, and the offense. They're hitting 279 coming into this ball game. Not surprised at all. I'm, you know, I wish we had to be a. But I think the Twins' goal is just get back to 500. See where you're at. Get back to 500. Right now the Twins five games under 500 six and a half games behind the Tigers. Twins fans know there are some areas that need to improve for the Twins but I think people who follow the Royals would say that people who follow the Indians. White Sox certainly. And even the Tigers you look at the Tiger team and as good as the starting rotation is they've got some. Rather substantial issues in the bullpen right now. One strike to Martinez. One and one. What the Tigers are able to do with their starting staff, most of these guys go seven innings in that starting rotation. So you take a little bit of that burden in that bullpen out of the picture because they go deep into the ballgame. Yeah, Darren Downs hadn't worked in a long time before yesterday's game because. The Tigers were enjoying very much enjoying a stretch where they had 18 quality starts in 20 games. Yeah, they had 14 straight coming into yesterday's ball game. Annabelle Sanchez worked only through the fourth inning, three and two thirds innings. That was their first non quality start in 15 games. Three and one now to Victor Martinez. Johnny Peralta hoping for a chance here in the third inning. Walters hoping to wrap up the third inning here on his 52nd pitch. And time called by Maurer. Ball down the middle, three and two. Now Walters, 28 years old, came up with the Cardinals back in 2009. Also spent a little time with the Toronto Blue Jays. Signed as a free agent by the Twins over the winter of 2011. Came up last year, 
did okay and then his shoulder really kind of went south. He had some shoulder issues, came back in September, pitched pretty good. Fielder goes and the pitch pounded foul. I wonder what it's like for Walters every year in spring training. If he could make the case, I suppose, that he had to learn how to pitch in the minor leagues, and that's why he's done as well as he has in the big leagues because he wasn't rushed by any means to get to the big leagues. But even in spring training this year, the attitude seemed to be hey, we know what you can do. We want to see B.J. Hermson. We want to see Kyle Gibson. And so you're kind of left almost on the outside looking in. A lot of B games. Yeah. And there's ball four, so the inning continues with two on and two out. Our first walk for Walters tried that breaking ball, but just missed outside. Well, then you don't make the team out of spring training, and you have to prove yourself all over again in the minor leagues, which is nothing new for you because that's where you've spent almost all of your professional career. Yeah, you bite the bullet, you go down to wherever they send you, and you hope that uh, you know something happens and you pitch well. That's all you can control. Is your own destiny by going down to the minor leagues and pitching well, and he did down in Rochester, and now he's making his fifth start this season for the Twins. Breaking ball to Peralta misses. And there's a strike. Walters made his major league debut in 2009 with the Cardinals and then was sent back down to Memphis for most of the rest of the season. Same story in 2010, most of the year AAA. 2011, most of the year at AAA. Last year he split his time between AAA and the big leagues, but then was taken off the 40 man roster and had to start the process all over again. Two and one. He's not happy with the number of pitches he's had to throw here with only eight outs on the board. Roll to the right side. Dozier has it. And the Tigers strand a couple in the third. Getting started with a pair of strikeouts. It's still two to nothing, Detroit. Weeks ago, and then yesterday, oh Alex Cobb hit in the right ear a line drive off the bat of Eric Hosmer. That's our Sanford Health injury report. Grave concern in both dugouts. And Cobb taken from the field. Thankfully, it appears he's going to be okay. And his tweet today saying thank you to the trainer. A minor headache today. He was put on the seven day concussion disabled list. Second very frightening incident involving a pitcher in this uh, first half of the season. Always dangerous you know as a pitcher you're standing 60 feet 6 inches away by the time you release that ball toward home plate. You're only maybe 55 53 feet away. 
And a lot of hitters, you know, they're trying to make good contact, and you're taught as a youngster, hit everything back up the middle, back up the middle, and there a lot of times stands that pitcher. So good news down in Tampa. One and one to Chris Parma. We'll wish him well. And I just, I know you count yourself very, very fortunate. 23 years in the big leagues, and you didn't have one. That Nothing hit you above the shoulders. Above, you said. above the waist. Above the waist. Right. Two and two. Now is that because your glove was so quick you were able to? No, they usually hit me in the back. I was running. <laughs> no, I, I had some balls that zinged by my head, but uh, never, thank God, ever made contact. Parmalee takes just off the plate three and two. He'll be followed by Dozier and then Florimo. And I, I would think that most of my teammates would say, you know, well, you never had to worry about that because the ball was always 20, 30 feet over your head anyway. <laughs> you know, nice teammates. Full count. Third full count in the last three or four uh, at bats against Fister. Twins haven't had a base runner yet, but they're trying to run his pitch count up here. And hit the outside corner that time. Straight over the top with a fastball down and away, and Fister picks up his first strikeout. You know, when you're six foot eight, we had a chance to talk to Doug Fister yesterday, and he said that's what he tries to do stay back free, eat that downward plane. And look at that pitch right there. That is a perfect pitcher's pitch. One down, Brian Dozier, the batter. He takes strike one. And that strikeout, no, uh, nothing new to that staff of the Tigers. They're averaging over a strikeout per inning so far this year. That's incredible. Yeah. One and one. Fister just picked up his 70th strikeout and 88 innings pitched. I, uh, Made the comment the other day, and I meant it in all seriousness. Twins don't have to face Justin Verlander or Max Scherzer in this series, but they did have to face Rick Porcello, who was brilliant on Friday night. Anibal Sanchez, who was uh, knocked out in the fourth inning uh, yesterday. Here's a fly to short right coming in as Hunter. And this guy, Doug Fisher, you can make a case provided. Sanchez is healthy. You can make a case for any of those four other Tiger starters or all four of them to go to the All Star game. Yeah, they've all pitched well. Two down in the third. Florimo I had a chance to talk to Jim Leland yesterday, and you know, he knows the importance of starting pitching. Everybody would like to have it, just so happened that the Tigers have it. They have very good starting staff. Of the four, Verlander, the only one drafted by the Tigers. They acquired Fister in a trade with Seattle, one of the best trades the Tigers have made in a long time. And then, of course, the inverse of that, the one of the worst trades the Mariners ever made. Sanchez acquired in a trade and then re-signed. Scherzer acquired in a trade. This one to left center field, but hanging in the air, Jackson can run it down on the gap. Three perfect innings for Doug Fisker and a 2 0 Tiger lead.
ballpark are Pepsi fans of the game. A lot of fathers, a lot of sons enjoying the ball game. And a lot of daughters and mm -hmm. even some moms along today. Ball one to Andy Dirks leading off the Tiger fourth. Lifted foul over the Tiger dugout, one and one. Mentioned the Twins have an off day tomorrow, and then the White Sox come to town for three, particularly at home. The Twins want to get into a rhythm, a routine where they win series, especially against teams within their division. Yeah, twins are 10 and 16 in the Central Division. And Tigers are 15 and 10. And again, 76 of the 162 ball games are played in your division. The Twins win today. They'll be six and seven against the Tigers. Problem has been the Twins have not fared well against the Royals, winning just one of six games. Swing and a miss. Dirks is gone on strikes one away. Walters picks up his fourth strikeout. Some cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. And an outfield assist again yesterday from Chris Parmalee. Yeah, led by uh, Aaron Hicks with seven. Parmalee with six outfield assists. 22 total. The best in Major League Baseball. Twins had a couple of runners thrown out at second. The Tigers had a couple of runners thrown out at home in the mm -hmm. game yesterday. One strike to Omar Infante. Tapper to short. Easy play for Florimon. Two down. Well, that's what PJ Walters needs is a quick inning. 64 pitches for PJ Walters with two outs here in the fourth inning. As we've talked about the pitching staff improving, one of the areas it has improved is keeping the ball in the ballpark. You talked about Deduno's done a nice job of that. Now, Walters gave up the two run home run to Hunter in the first inning. But last year, the Twins were out homer 198 to 131. Well, roughly a three to two margin. The Hunter home run today, just the 60th allowed, and the Twins have hit 55. Mm -hmm. And they're not hitting any more home runs than they did a year ago. They're on a pace to hit about the same number. But they are. Keeping the ball in the ballpark much better than they did a year ago. Yeah, Kevin Correa leading the staff with 14 home runs allowed, but we've said it before 12 of them have been solo home runs. It's staying right. away from the, you know, the two run, three run, grand slam type of situation. 2 0 to the number nine batter of Vila, broken out for 19. Uh, slump or hitless string with a. Double to the left field corner in the second inning. Two and one. So a breaking ball mile there. Per hour break. Yeah, Vila kind of hesitated. Another curveball. Just missing low. Walters realizes he's one of those pitchers. He's not going to blow guys away. So he's got to throw that breaking ball. He's got to throw that little slider, the changeup. Mix in all four of his pitches to be successful. And Maurer helping him. Here's a fastball. And it's whistled in the center field. Avila with a pair of hits. That ball just stayed up a little bit, allowed Avila to get the barrel of the bat out and get his second hit. Sixth hit, excuse me, seventh hit for the Tigers. Twins tickets remain available and affordable. Get fed and entertained at very favorable prices throughout the year. For example, the Sports Authority Value Pack, Tuesdays and Thursdays, include a ticket, hot dog, and a soft drink. This and other special deals available every day of the week at twinsbaseball.com slash tickets or by calling 833 Twins. Fouled away off the bat of Austin Jackson. 
Jackson singled, stole second, Hunter homered, and there you have it, the early 2 0 lead. Yeah, you don't want to like facing that leadoff hitter for the third time already, and here we are in the fourth inning. But it's still a 2 0 ball game. One and one. Last four Tiger hits have all come with two outs in an inning. Yeah, 22 in the first, 22 in the third. This will be number 15 here in the fourth. Cap foul, one and two. Walters in his last start, that coming against the Philadelphia Phillies here on last Tuesday, worked seven and a third innings through 97 pitches. Got a no decision, but the Twins won that ball game three to two. Inside two and two. Tigers doing a pretty good job with getting hits with two outs in this three game series. Full count. And Avila will leave early from first. Morno trying to get Walter's attention. He'll play behind the runner. Blasted to left. Jackson was waiting for the curveball. Hanging breaking ball. And he clubbed it. So another two run home run and a very meaningful two out hit here doubling the Tiger lead. Yeah, the old hanger. Jackson hitting his third home run of the year. Yeah, he crushed it into the second deck here at Target Field. Ball left up. Jackson. Hitting this ball long way. And now Hunter with a two run home run in the first inning. Ball one. It's amazing whoever invented this game and they said three outs. You know, the first two sometimes are so easy. It's sometimes the third out that really makes you start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Not while you're out there on the mound. No, later. <laughs> Two and one. You know how quick this game would be played if there's just two outs in right. an inning? It's that third out that sometimes you know you get the first two outs on three pitches and you think, boy, this is going to be a quick inning, and then boom, 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 you're. Throwing 17, 18, 19, 20 pitches. And you're looking for that final out. There's some logic to that, but it reminds me of what John Lowenstein's uh, uh, solution was to all the bang bang plays at first base. Move the bases back three feet. <laughs> to the left side, Plouffe has it. And got Hunter by a half step. A two out single by Avila and a two out home run by Jackson. And now it's four to nothing.
Now the leadoff hitter has a two run home run. Second place hitter is a two run home run. Twins have handled Cabrera and Fielder okay. It's the first two guys. You want to keep them off the bases? Well, they're taking care of business themselves here this afternoon. And Doug Fister has enough run support to equal <laughs> what he's been given in his last four starts. Yeah, Doug Fister came in his last four starts 0 and 3, but a very good 2.67 ERA in those last four starts. Clint Thomas takes a strike on the outside corner. A perfect first trip through the order for Doug Fister. Mauer and Dolmet will follow. Way out in front of the off speed pitch, 0 and 2. That's a big curveball right there by Fister. Fister throwing strikes, 43 pitches, 28 strikes. Foul back. And strike one, eight of ten batters he's been able to get strike one. Work ahead in the count. Inside one and two. Busted bad roller to the right side. Martinez has it. Feeds Fister one away. Let's get caught up in a four nothing Tiger lead. Well, second batter of the ball game, Torrey Hunter, after Austin Jackson singled, hits his 300th career home run. Hugs all around. And we just saw Austin Jackson get a hanging breaking ball on a 3 2 pitch, making it a 4 0 ball game. Doug Fister, perfect so far. 10 up, 10 down. Here's Maurer, bounced to second his first time up. I hope this comes off sounding as a, as a compliment. But it almost seems like the Tigers again this year are just kind of playing with the rest of the division, like a like a cat would play with a mouse. And the Tigers are leading by four and a half games, but they clearly have more talent in their rotation through their lineup than anybody else in the division. That's why they have been the prohibitive favorite to win the division, one and two. And whenever somebody steps up and saying, okay, we're ready, we're going to put a little heat on you, the Tigers do what they did to the Indians, beat them five straight. Mm -hmm. You think they're toying with the division? Well, I, you know, for lack of a better phrase, I don't know. They, they play as they did last year well enough to stay in first place. But I don't know the way they played, whether they're going to run away with the division by 12, 15 games, because they haven't shown the ability to do that to do everything else. Yes, but not that. Foul still two and two. Well, it all comes down to starting pitching. You know, they're starting staff so strong. They, this is game number 67 for the Tigers in the first 66 ball games. The starters have 46 of 66 quality starts, meaning six innings, three earned runs or less. I mean, that's 70 percent of your games. You can expect your starter to go out there and pitch a deep into the game. Another ground ball is second off the bat of Mauer. Infante to Martinez, 11 up, 11 down. And what's been nice for the Twins as of late, we have seen the starting staff go deeper into the ball game. So the Twins are getting better, and the Tigers have just been consistent from day one. Two down on the fourth, and now Ryan Doma. Twins need to get that first hit out of the way and then start working on the scoreboard. Ball one. Doug Fister making his 11th career start against the Twins. He has three wins, seven losses against the Twins in his first 10 career starts, but six of the 10 had been quality starts. Career 3.21 ERA against the Twins, but he's three and seven, so he's lost some tough games against the Twins. Foul back, two and one. Here's 
Doma who worked himself into a favorable count 2 and 0. Oh, expecting a fastball and yet Fister was able to. Almost get it by him. Looks like Doma was late on the fastball. He does have a unique delivery and. Sometimes you wonder whether there's something really deceptive about his delivery that it kind of sneaks up on a hitter. I said when Fister's out there, it reminds me a lot of Jim Palmer, as tall as they are, and the way that they get to that balance point right there, and then just nice and easy. And the first base runner for the Twins is Theo Walk. Take a look right here. Kind of steps to the side, gets to that balance point, high leg kick. And then the long Jim Palmer type delivery and a follow through. Good follow through. Allow that arm to come all the way through. Now from the stretch and Morno at the plate. With her little roller in front of the plate about 25 feet was thrown out by Avila. Grounded to the right side. And Morno's gone on one pitch. Twins get a base runner. No hits yet. And a 4 nothing Tiger lead after four. Back to Target Field as the Tigers lead the Twins for nothing. I'm Jamie Hirsch in the Minnesota Lottery Winners Circle on this special Father's Day. We've got a one-year-old boy just turned one today. And he's here with Dad for his first Twins game. Yeah. Happy Father's Day to you, and I Thank bet this you. is the start of a lot more Twins game to come. Well, hopefully. Yeah. What? Well, how's he doing so far? He's one years old. He's doing great. He's uh, very excited to be at Target Field. Uh, we're hoping for uh, a turnaround here, and the Twins will come back. So we'll Ab see. Absolutely, yeah. He's a uh, I was chewing on our little lotto tickets here. They're gonna, we're gonna send you guys home with hundred dollars worth of scratch-off tickets from the Minnesota Lottery. So enjoy, happy birthday, and happy Father's Day. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah, I love the party hat. Awesome. Happy birthday, young man. That's not something you'd ever do is uh, oh, celebrate your birthday by wearing <laughs> a hat. Well, in 295 more days, I'll be doing it again. Haven't seen next year's schedule. Probably be in Baltimore again, don't you think? <laughs> Two and one. Cabrera, Fielder, and Martinez facing Walters in the fifth inning. Cabrera has a single, so does Fielder, so does Martinez, but they haven't been involved in the run scoring to this point. Yeah, Walters, I think this is the first time we've seen him not as sharp as he has been over his first four starts. Just left the, you know, that fastball in on Torrey that he uh, that he hit out for the home run, then the three-two breaking ball to Jackson left up. Swarzak starting to get loose as Walters uh, throwing his 87th pitch. And Cabrera takes a leadoff walk in the fifth. Second walk for Walters. Twins fans join your favorite players at Hang with the Majors. August 1st, Toby Keith's in St. Louis Park. Hang with the Majors, a fun, informal event that benefits the Minnesota Military Family Foundation. Go to twinsbaseball.com slash community or call 612-659-3426 for more info. Fielder, the batter. 
you can pitch Cabrera carefully walk him intentionally or unintentionally but then you've got to come back and throw the next guy strikes that's what got Scott Diamond in trouble on Friday night after the intentional walk he fell behind a really good hitter 2 and 0 yeah fell behind 2 and 0 then tried a little cutter slider and fielder hit that ball off the wall in right field for a two run double 1 and 0 to right center field Cleet Thomas will chase it make a nice running catch Cabrera has to retouch second and the throw going to second base they won't get the double play Thomas with a nice running catch had he thrown to the cutoff man Dozier they might have had a shot at doubling off Cabrera Well, you go that far for the ball like Thomas did we get a great view right here that ball looked like it was going to be a gap maybe an extra base hit but Thomas just caught up with that ball and then just wheeled and threw it back toward the infield towards second base and Cabrera had rounded the bag and I don't even know if you know he's right now as Thomas makes that catch. He's already stepping on the bag going back to first. So I don't know if they would have been able to double him up or not, but uh, what a great catch by Thomas. One down, Victor Martinez, a single and a walk so far. Foul off the screen in front of the Twins dugout. You know, this is a guy is kind of a key for the uh, Tigers, Dick, is Martinez. You know, he missed all of last year. And, you know, the average low, here's a guy that uh, came into this season, a, a 303 career hitter. As the season goes on and he gets more at bats, yeah, I think he'll get back to where Victor Martinez has always been, a, a 300 hitter from both sides of the plate. Dozier. Oh, nice play. Pop oh, up slide starting wow. a double play. Wow, nice play. 4 6 3, a double play getting the Twins off the field in the fifth. Nothing. Detroit Twins still don't have a hit against Doug Fister. They'll send Arcia, Ploof, and Parmalee here in the fifth inning. Try to first get a hit, then start getting some runs. Well, Fister so far has retired all 12 batters no without a hit. Eight ground ball outs, three fly ball outs to go with his one strikeout. One and one. Arcia with the closest thing the Twins have had to a hit. He sent a deep fly ball down the left field line, and Andy Dirks made a nice running catch to retire Arcia in the second. Foul back, one and two.
The two Tiger home runs in this game, just the second and third home runs in this homestand. This is the sixth game of this homestand. And Arcia strikes out one away. Well, Fister picks up his second strikeout. Let's take a look at the catch by Cleet Thomas off the bat of Prince Fielder. Now, this is what I saw from our view right there. That ball looked like it's going to be in a gap. Thomas went a long way, reached out, made a nice catch. You saw Cabrera. He got past the bag because if that ball gets by Thomas, he's thinking about scoring right there. So, you know, he went past the bag. He knew he had to retouch the bag and then made it back to first safely. One strike to Trevor Plouffe. And I say that because we have seen guys go before, you know, on a catch like that, go by the bag and then cut back to across the infield pretty much back to first base. Reminded me of uh, some pinch running uh, moves made by managers that ended games yesterday. Robin Ventura put in Jordan Danks to pinch run with a tying run at second and two outs. Blue with a drive to left and Dirks is there to catch the liner. Well hit ball for out number two. You get interactive with us during the broadcast participating in the AT&T Twitter poll. And we're asking you which Twins player is your favorite to follow on Twitter. Hashtag follow Diamond, follow Dunsing, Hicks, Perkins, Plouffe, and we'll give you our final poll results later today. I guess when you go in as a pinch runner, the last thing you want to do is get picked off, huh? Jordan Banks got picked off. He was <laughs> supposed to be the tying run at second base, or would have been, but he got picked off. The worst was Alexi Casilla. Buck Showalter put him into the game at first base with one out, and Casilla thought there were two outs. And there was a fly ball to the right field corner. The guy caught it and could see it was almost all the way to third base because he thought it were two outs. Got a great jump though. <laughs> a foul ball, two strikes to Parmalee. Called out on strikes. Parmalee called out on strikes his first time up. Well, Twins had a good offensive day yesterday. They every starter had at least one hit 14 hits overall but still looking for their first hit here this afternoon and a one two three inning for Doug Fister five no hit innings and a four nothing lead. Home run by Torrey Hunter, and that's the subject of our freeze cam brought to you by Frost Group Tours Life. Well, hugs all around for Torrey Hunter hitting his 300th career home run. And I tweeted, did he have to do it against the Twins? <laughs> yeah. Johnny Peralta will lead off the sixth for Detroit. Dirks and Infante will follow. Yeah, PJ Walters out there. He had 82 pitches after first four, but he needed a quick fifth inning. He only threw nine pitches, and PJ Walters trying to get through six here. Changeup missing. Two and one.
three and one as the starters now have gone longer. And been much more competitive Dirks in the on deck circle. You can't help but think whether the twins. Might eventually be able to get down to 12 pitchers from 13. And there's a walk leading off the six and then within that the question of who among the relievers. Would you send down. There aren't any easy answers. Get ready fans for Fox Sports one America's new 24 hour sports network. Fox Sports one will be your home for great live sports all the news and highlights you want shows and specials that only Fox can bring you America's new sports network is Fox Sports one coming August 17th. Twins have three left handers in the bullpen five right handers. Ideally you wouldn't want more than 12 pitchers on a pitching staff you'd have much more flexibility on your bench. To make moves pinch running pinch hitting what have you. But I know Ron Gardenhire enjoys having. Another left hander out there. So Brian Dunsing isn't all beaten up. In the lefty lefty matchups that he wants to. Execute in the late innings and Caleb Theobar hasn't given up a run yet so. I don't know. You know what you would do there and then you've got Fiend, Swarzak, Burton, Presley and Renicki and they've all done a good job out of from the right side. Like I've uh, expressed my opinion over the year that uh, you know baseball when it does come to the collective bargaining that they have to maybe look at. Maybe another adding another one or two guys to that 25 man roster. Because so many starters and clubs are not going deep that the bullpens are being overused so. Yeah, 13 pitchers. I know Gardy would like to have a third string catcher like he had Herman here right. because of the situation with Domit and Maurer. You know, both of them are in the lineup here. You, something happens to either one of those two, you, you, know, you lose somebody. In this case, today's game, you'd move, if something were to happen to Joe Maurer, you'd move Domit out of the DH spot, but then you lose the DH. Right. And then the pitcher has to hit, and we don't want to see well, that. We don't want that. One and two. To uh, Dirks, Peralta at first. That's to left. Arce is there for the catch, one away. He's a milk from around baseball. Chris Davis now with 23 home runs, five more than Miguel Cabrera. Placido Polanco, a good year with the Marlins. Corey Kluber's had some good starts for the Indians, and right now he's shutting out the Nationals in Cleveland. Polanco, he just keeps ticking, doesn't he? He's a good player. I can imagine him being a player that would be traded by the Marlins to a contending team next month. Good bunt up the third baseline. Plouffe bare hands it, fires not in time. So Infante drops down a bunt. And Peralta goes to second base. That's a veteran right there. And Fonte noticing that, you know, Plouffe was playing back and got the pitch that he liked. He looked at that first fastball, laid it down nicely. Plouffe made a great play. But Infante hustling out of that box gets an infield base hit. And runners at first and second have to bring out manager Ron Gardenhire to make a pitching change. And so Walter's not as sharp as we've seen him. 101 pitches, 59 strikes, and he leaves with one out in the sixth.
games uh, of the year for the Twins in Detroit against the Tigers and just not quite as sharp today. All right, let's still have a couple breaking balls up to Hunter, a fastball to Hunter, and then a breaking ball to Jackson. But uh, Anthony Swarzak hopefully will be able to get him out of this uh, situation. Runners at first and third and one out. For Swarzak, he's making his 20th relief appearance. He last worked on Thursday against the Phillies in the 3 2 loss to the Phillies. He pitched two shutout innings in relief of Kevin Correa. For whatever reason, Avila had a couple of hits, breaking a hitless string against B.J. Walters. It's already 4 0. Doug Fister's absolutely handcuffed the Twins. They can ill afford to fall further behind. Avila hitting just 106 over his last 22 games. Two for two, though, here today. Well, Avila's hit into six double plays. Twins have turned a couple double plays already here this afternoon. See if Swarzak can get Avila to hit the ball into the ground. Outside, ball one. Two and zero. Oh. Avila in his fifth season with the Tigers made the All-Star team for the Tigers a couple years ago. Career 261 hitter, so you know right now hitting at 173. A couple years ago he hit 295 for the Tigers, hit 19 home runs. Late on the fastball, two and one. For Zach trying to get Avila to hit it on the ground at someone. On the outside corner, two and two. Good pitch. Avila swings at that. That might have been the ground ball that he needed. But he took it for strike two. Thought he took it for ball three. Good pitch. See a catch to corner right there? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm telling you, the, that plate has a black on it, okay? It, All around the rim. The, uh, that but hit just the black. The, just the white part is the strike zone, no, though. No, 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 no. The black. Part of two. the plate, isn't it? Full count, one away. Wouldn't expect Peralta and Infante to take off here, but three and two to Alex Avila. There they go, and it's fouled away. If Avila were to strike out, Maurer would have a clean shot at the runner at third base with no batter there. Jim Leland sent him on the last 3 2 pitch. We'll see what he does on the next. Again on three and two. There they go again. Strike three. Mowers throw. Plenty of time to get him. Very nice. Strike him out. Throw him out. So Swarzak strikes out the number nine batter. Mowers throws out a runner. It's still four nothing.
North is presented by McDonald's. Quench your thirst. Get any size soft drink or sweet tea for just $1. And by Toyota. Let's go places. To find your nearest Toyota dealer and check out our current offers, visit buyatoyota.com. 4 nothing Detroit Twins still don't have a hit against Doug Fister. Brian Dozier will lead things off. 68 pitches for Fister. It'll be Dozier, Floramon, and Thomas. And the sixth showing bunt leading off the sixth. Is that okay? The yeah, Dozier for sure. tries to for bunt sure. for a hit here. 4 nothing okay. ball game. The Twins need base runners. All right. Only base runner has been Ryan Doman as a two out walk in the fourth inning. There's a drive to left field. That's better. Than That's the that. first hit. That's the first run. Dozier's fourth of the year, and the Twins are on the board. That's a lot better than breaking up a no hitter with a butt. For Fister, his only his that's his only third home run allowed, his second to a right-handed hitter. Dozier getting a pitch, middle in, opening up quickly, and making it a four to one ball game. Florimo with an aggressive swing, a foul one strike. Like a two seamer came in on Dozier. Boy, did he open up quickly. Line drive home run. There's a show of a bunt. He didn't offer at it. One and one. Oh, we've seen Slorbone do that before and then push it towards second base. Of course, Cabrera in on the grass looking for the possible bunt. Two and one. Speed pitch tap foul. Two and two. Yeah, Fister making his 109th major league start. 35 wins, 45 losses. Very good 3.46 ERA. Has three, six complete games, one shutout. And that coming last year in Detroit against the Twins, a seven hit shutout. And Floramone strikes out. One down. And strikeout number four for Doug Fister. If you're looking for a laugh this weekend, Brian, always looking for a Brian, laugh. Not yeah, just this all, weekend, all the time. Brian Hall follows Minnesota athletes on Twitter all week, and he brings you his top ten tweets each Friday. Check them out at FoxSportsNorth.com. Now, you're a former Minnesota athlete. I don't know whether Brian is following you, whether you've made his top ten list at any time, or ask, whether you ask try. Me if I care, whether you try to inject any humor in your tweets. <laughs> I try to, yeah, sometimes. I've read yours. I I guess you do not, huh? <laughs> one and zero to Cleet Thomas. You're just not very complimentary <laughs> to me today. You work with somebody else one day. Well, it's the shoes you, that you're wearing. And you today. treat me like rubbish. No, you it's just, the shoes that no, you're wearing today. It has nothing to do with yes, the shoes. Yes, it does. Ask your son Eric. <laughs> Two and zero. Oh. I'm not showing the shoes I'm wearing on TV. They're clearing the booth here, like we're gonna. Here's a ball on a liner to the first baseman. <laughs> Come on, show, no. show your shoes. There. What's wrong with those? That's nothing. Nothing wrong with them, Pat Boone. <laughs> I, I want to know where your white belt is. I don't own a white have, belt. I have I, baseball I, shoes you, on. You get, those look like hiking boots. <laughs> it's okay. It's a hike coming up here every day. <laughs> Two down. Here's Joe Mauer. I'm going to get you a white belt with those white shoes. Mauer is over two with two ground balls to second. One strike. Twins on the board here, trying to whittle away at what was a four-run lead, and a liner to the shortstop. One hit, a home run, a couple of lineouts, and it's four to one after six.
long ball. Yeah, two two run home runs for the Detroit Tigers. First one, Torrey Hunter hitting his 300th career home run in the first inning, and then on a 3-2 pitch, Austin Jackson a two run home run that gave Doug Fister a four nothing lead. Had a no hitter going through the sixth inning, and then in the first batter he faced, it was Brian Dozier with a solo home run makes it a four to one Tigers lead. By the way, the shoes aren't white, they're eggshell. <laughs> Austin Jackson to lead off the seventh against Anthony Swarzak. Up and away, ball one. You have to find an eggshell belt then <laughs> to go along with your white. If you should wear your white pants with the eggshell shoes and your white belt. Eggshell belt. I'll find one. To center field. Easy catch for Thomas, one down. This copyright of telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins, LLC. Here's Torrey Hunter, a two run home run, the 300th of his major league career, a strikeout and a ground ball to third. Ball one. Chicago White Sox, the team behind the Twins in the American League Central standings, in danger of being swept by the Houston Astros. Check swing. No, it's two and zero. Oh. Twins thirty and thirty-five. They hope to win this ball game and get back to four games underwater. And they host the White Sox for three. Go to Cleveland for three. Play down in Miami for a couple of games. Two and one. Driven to right. And uh, Parmalee with a diving catch and right. Nice dive catch right there by Parmalee. John Hirschbeck, the second base umpire, went out there to make sure that he did not trap this ball. And Parmalee comes charging in and makes a nice catch. And Hirschbeck hustling out there. And Parmley with a great catch. Nice diving play. The two down in the seventh. And that'll bring up Cabrera. High fastball fouled it to the screen. The single, a strikeout, and a walk. And another foul. Well, I'm tweeting a, a picture of your shoes, and I said, How many of you like these shoes that Dick wore today? Would you wear them? I think I ought to be able to <laughs> wear things out of my closet without it being. Uh, scrutinized by somebody <laughs> wearing blue jeans. Hey, these blue jeans cost probably more than the pants that you have on. From well, just the fabric alone. <laughs> You're darn right. <laughs> it's a lot of fabric here. <laughs> Two strikes. You like my shoes, though, don't you? Here's a ball oh. driven deep to the right field corner near the pole and foul. One thing about Cabrera, he has power to all fields. Right a little bit off the end of the bat. That did not have enough to go out of the ballpark, but he's such a good hitter. I mean, you pitch him away, he'll go that way. You pitch him enough inside, he'll turn and open up. Now, 
I'd like to see him win the triple crown again. Really? I, I know. Yeah. I mean, it's never been done before by you know one individual player in back-to-back -back years. And Mauer hangs on. Cabrera strikes out for the second time, and Swarzak has gotten five outs facing four batters. One of our crew members, Mike Pijon, offering his uh, happy father or getting a happy Father's Day greeting. There's Mike. And uh, our Father's Day wish uh, goes out to all of you yes. on this very special day. Doug Fister finally gave up a hit. It was a home run. The Twins very much in this game, but now they need to follow up a run in the sixth by getting uh, some more here in the home half of the seventh. Time ago, hit his first major league home run in Detroit at Tiger Stadium against the Tigers. Now he got number 300 at Target Field against the Twins. Wow, 17 years. Tory Hunter has been doing this. And hugs all around for Tory. First home run. Back in 1998. Yeah, he might not hit double digits in home runs this year, but uh, as his career has evolved, I mean, he sits pretty nicely number two in that Detroit batting order. He's become a very competent number two hitter in the Tiger lineup. Get in the middle of the Twins lineup, of course, all those years. Twins will send up in the bottom of the seventh inning. They're three, four, and five batters. Domit, Morno, and Arcee. Ball one, by the way. Uh, just since you keep bringing it up, in my uh, uh, Twitter account. Uh -huh. uh, yes. My Twitter followers are overwhelmingly in support. Of the uh, eggshell or just shows or your Twitter uh, people are. <laughs> These are nice Orvis shoes, eggshell, summertime. One and one. And Doman shoots one foul, one and two. So did all three of your Twitter <laughs> friends. I'm just saying it's overwhelming. I'm not saying how many. Domit was the first Twins base runner. He drew a two out walk in the fourth. Just inside, two and two. Tigers a little concerned about Anibal Sanchez, who pitched yesterday. They're not sure that he's physically 100%. There's a call, third strike. 
just missed the inside corner with the prior pitch and hit it with that one. Yeah, the prior pitch a little slider inside. Then he went back into the fastball, and Fister picks up his fifth strikeout. MLB.tv celebrates 11 years with new low yearly prices. You can watch every out of market game live on over 350 supported mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.tv Premium. Visit MLB.tv today. MLB.tv baseball everywhere. Pop up short left. Andy Dirks. Two down. Well, he fought the sun right there. Kind of put his left hand up at the last second to. Uh, Follow that uh, baseball as it went into the glove. That'll bring up Oswaldo Arcia. Arcia with a fly to left and a strikeout. Indians beat Washington two to nothing. Corey Kluber with a great start for the Cleveland Indians. Strike on the inside corner. Indians are back to the 500 mark now, 34 and 34. Two games ahead of the Twins at the start of the day, now two and a half. One and one. Well, Fister doing a great job getting strike one. 16 of 23 first pitch strikes. 89 pitches for Doug Fister with two outs here in the seventh inning. Three and one with Blue on deck. Another short fly ball to left. Dirks hardly has to move. Another one, two, three inning for Doug Fisker. Father's Day. We asked people to tweet in for our tweet talk segment using the hashtag Dad's Day with a picture of how they were spending this Father's Day. Our first one comes from Justin Rodriguez. A picture of presumably he and his daughter watching the Twins game. It says the shirt says it all. The remote, the grill, and of course your twins. Second tweet coming in as well. It's a beautiful picture of Target Field. Plenty of sons and daughters taking their dads to Target Field today. Beautiful day for baseball as the Twins try to rally late in this game, Dickenberg. Well, thank you, Jamie. That's what Twitter's for, to send Pictures. messages of endearment, yep. not to ridicule the clothes of the people you're working with. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun. Prince Fielder will lead off the eighth for Detroit. Yeah, against Brian Dunsing. Dunsing coming in, making his 33rd relief appearance. Done a good job out of that bullpen. 
not allowed a home run. In his first 32 relief appearances. One and oh. Fielder Martinez and Peralta in the eighth inning. On the ground, a couple of hops to Ploof. One down. Brian Dempsey talked about the importance of uh, being a father. I've learned uh, a, a lot since being a, being a dad and, and what is really important and how to go about you know your day and your business and and um, what really matters at the end of the day and you know and according according to my daughter you know I'm, I'm just daddy I don't you know if I have a rough day she doesn't, doesn't care and um, it makes it all better when you go home and you know they smile at you and they don't you know like I said they don't they don't care what happened at the ballpark. Yeah, his daughter, a little McKenna. Yeah, McKenna pictured in the back there in mid sneeze. It's one of the best baby pictures I've ever seen. <laughs> One strike to Victor Martinez. A little McKenna, about a year and a half old. <laughs> That's a great picture of a beautiful young lady. One strike to Martinez. And a foul back two strikes. When you miss as much time as Martinez missed last year, it figures to take a good little while, as good as he is, to feel comfortable again and be as productive as he's been. And that's the Tiger hope that eventually, after the All Star break, teams will have uh, even more to think about going uh, fighting through the middle of this Tiger lineup. One even, and two. Even though the average is not there, you know, he has a track record uh, of 12 seasons. You know, with the Indians, the Red Sox, and now in his third season with the Tigers of being an outstanding hitter, a clutch hitter. And uh, as he gets more at bats after missing all of last year, those clutch hits will continue. Arcia chasing it, snags a line drive out number two. And that'll bring up Johnny Peralta. Peralta on the day, a walk, strike out in the ground out. Big swing and a miss. Out scored four to one out hit nine to one. One and one. Well, one thing the Tigers have, and I guess you'd have to credit Fielder and Cabrera, is you you have these veterans that play every day. So you look at a guy like Peralta, you know, he doesn't want a day off because I get, this guy doesn't take a day off. Cabrera, you know, Fielder doesn't take a day off, even though he's DHing today. You know, he's still in the ball game. They play every day. And that really sets a tone. That's why the Twins are better this year and they're more interesting to watch this year because Justin Morneau is at first base as he was before all the health issues started to set him back. Justin's played just about every day. Joe Maurer catching like he did in his MVP season. Good inning for Dunsing. We'll see if the Twins can get something started in the bottom of the inning.
stepping up to the plate, hoping to have a game like he had yesterday. Had quite a night last night, but I talked to him before the game and asked him if there was anything different he's been doing since coming off the DL with that strained cap. He says he's actually started riding a bike before games to help loosen his muscles a little bit. He said he realized he had to make changes in his pregame routine so that he can stay in the lineup as much as possible. He's already pulled two calves this year, so he says you have to change something. You can't just do the same thing over and over again. And as for Ron Gardenhire, certainly pleased with what he saw yesterday from Plouffe, guys, but he says he's more concerned with consistency, seeing how he does over the next few weeks. So time will tell, but here's Trevor Plouffe now. All right, thank you, Jamie. Plouffe taking strike one and now a ball. And consistency, I think, more in the field than at the plate. You're going to have games at the plate. You might hit a home run. You might get three hits, as Trevor did yesterday. But I think the most impressive thing for the manager yesterday was the plays Plouffe made in the field. Right. Going to his left, going to his right. One and two. Tigers have some activity in their bullpen. Plouffe, Parmalee, and Dozier trying to Get something going against Doug Fister. The only run that they've gotten was on a uh, home run leading off the sixth by Brian Dozier. And the only hit they've been able to get off of uh, Doug Fister. On the outside corner, he's been razor sharp. He's gotten a number of strikeouts looking on pitches right on the edges of the strike zone. Yeah, strikeout number six for Fister. Long, tall, mean, right down another perfect pitch for Fister working down and away. Now Parmalee, a couple of strikeouts. Foul back, strike one. Look at the Tiger rotation. Verlin, Scherzer, Fister, Sanchez, Porcello. It's hard to imagine them having any extended losing streak. They might lose a series here or there. They might have a bad week or two. Benoit and Valverde warming up. But it's hard to imagine them having a losing streak anywhere as approaching the 10 game losing streak that the Twins had. You know, you got five starters right there, very consistent. And Jeff Jones uh, gets a lot of the credit from Jim Leland of doing a good job, great job of handling his staff. Well, Parmalee will remember Doug Fister and the uh, three strikeouts he suffered at his hands here this afternoon. That's a tough breaking ball right there underneath the swing of that left handed hitter, Parmalee. And Fister picking up his seventh strikeout. Seems to be getting stronger as the game goes on. 100 pitches for Fister. 63 have been strikes. Dozier's home run in the sixth has been it in terms of runs, hits. The only time that Fister's had to pitch from the stretch here today was to Morno in the fourth inning after Domit's walk. Slow hole breaking ball, one and one. As I mentioned, you know, you mentioned somebody's up in the bullpen. Fister does have six complete games. Tigers only have two complete games. One of those, that one hitter that Sanchez threw against the Twins. Fister has the other. One and two. That's a fair ball. Dozier's got both knocks against Fister. Both of them extra base hits. Fister on a curveball and Dozier whacked it. Yeah, he hit the home run on a look like a two seamer that came in on him. Dozier quickly opened up and hit the home run, his fourth home run. And here another pitch that kind of stayed in. And see Brian jumping on that high breaking ball, keeping that ball fair down the third baseline for his fifth double of the year. The Tigers got a couple of runs after two were out back in the fourth inning. A single and a home run. Now Florimone taps it foul. Just to get one back here would be huge as we enter the ninth inning. A 
Jose Valverde has hardly been uh, very reliable. And he will get the save opportunity if there is one in the ninth inning. Inside one and one. Most pitches Fister has thrown in a ball game 116. He's done it twice. Ooh. Slow breaking ball, but a miss somehow. Two and one. Fouled away, two and two. Floramone struggling a bit in this homestand, and the average would be which he successfully floated between the 240 and the 260 range up and down for weeks and weeks. We've seen his average now go down to 227. Two and two. Inside, I asked Ron Gardner today about the Poor batting average from the right side. And he said it's simply a matter of the Twins not seeing much left-handed pitching. Right. Loramon just does not have uh, the experience of uh, hitting from the right side much this year. Yeah, only 36 at bats as a right-handed hitter. This is his 164th as a left-handed hitter. Full count. Walk gets the tying run to the plate, and there's ball four. Well now Cleve Thomas has a chance to tie the game with one swing. And Jim Leland's coming out. I believe he's already made the move. Well, what a performance by Doug Fister here this afternoon. A quick trip by manager Jim Leland as he pats Fister on the buttocks and says good job. Twitter poll. We asked you which Twins player is your favorite to follow on Twitter. And Trevor Plouffe outdistanced Glenn Perkins in the balloting. We'll start a new poll Tuesday against the White Sox. Joaquin Benoit coming into the ball game. He worked here on Friday night through two thirds of an inning. Had a strikeout through nine pitches, seven for strikes. 29th relief appearance. Very good job out of the bullpen. Only 20 hits allowed in 28 and two thirds innings. Nine walks, one intentional, with 34 strikeouts. And he has done a much better job keeping the ball in the ballpark. Two home runs allowed this year. Last year he gave up a very high 14 home runs in 71 innings. Thomas hoping to hit one out here and tie the game.
Way out in front of the changeup. He, he has a very good changeup. Fastball in the low 90s. Benoit, 35 years old, in his third season with the Tigers. Came up with the Rangers, spent some time with the Rays. Rally hats are out. Side one and one. He's trying to put something together here with two out in the eighth. Dozier doubled. Floramone worked the walk. Thomas does not have a home run yet this year. For the Twins, for Rochester, he had a good start to his season in April. Base hit left field. Dozier around third. He's being waved in. And it's a 4 2 ball game. Buckley Thomas, who signed by the Tigers back in 2005, got a couple hits in yesterday's ball game. Got a fastball away from Benoit, just went with it. Picks up his third RBI. Ball staying up. And Thomas, good solid swing. Finds that gap between third and short in the left field. That's a 4 2 game. Mauer at the plate. 20 doubles on the year to lead the team, and a double here might very well tie the game. Side ball one. Bowers 20 doubles way off the league lead. Manny Machado may set the record for doubles in a season. He's already got 31. Well, he's having a great year, isn't he, for the Orioles? 1 and 0 to Mauer. The end of the bat, short center Jackson coming in, makes a nice running catch. Got a great read on a short fly ball, and the Twins get one but lead two. Field as we head to the ninth inning. I'm Jamie Hirsch inviting you to stick around after the game for Twins Live presented by Century Link. We'll talk about Doug Fister's fantastic day going seven and two thirds strong innings for the Tigers. Meanwhile, Detroit's top of the order causing some problems for PJ Walters and the Twins. We'll break it down and hear from manager Ron Gardenhire after the game. Dick and Bert. All right, thank you, Jamie. Twins dug out hoping they've got a ninth inning comeback ahead of them. Well, that's a big inning right here for Brian Dunsing. He will start this uh, top of the ninth inning. You want to keep it at 
two runs deficit because of Jose Valverde's struggles as a reliever. Andy Dirks to lead things off in the Tiger night. Fouled at the plate, strike one. Dunsing had a one, two, three, top of the eighth with a strikeout. Two only ten pitches. Swing and a called strike 0 and 2. A big sweeping breaking ball by Dunsing. So far, the bullpen has been more than perfect. Seven batters faced, eight outs. Dirk's gone on three pitches. And Dunsing picking up the second strikeout. As the Twins hope to get back to the 500 mark, their one strength is probably the Achilles heel for the Tigers right now. Twins feel very good from the seventh inning on with the likes of Fien and Dunsing, Burton, and Perkins. Up the middle, off the mound, and into center field. And Fonte has a one out hit. And that's the one area of insecurity right now for Jim Leland, the late inning relief. Yeah, he was asked that the other day because Jose Valverde has been struggling and he finally said I had enough you know he is my closer I'm going to stay with him as long as uh, you know <laughs> I mean that's it quit asking me questions I like this the uh, analogy he uses it's like everybody telling me that I'm bald but no one's telling me how to grow hair right <laughs> here's Alex Avila it's obvious that Jim Leland is bald and he's got some bullpen issues. What do you want him to do about it? Yeah. His closer right now wasn't even with the club at the start of the year. They've already addressed a concern, and uh, some people feel that they will uh, address that concern further and acquire somebody for the final second half of the season. One strike to Avila. And a ball. The Indians have already won. Houston leading Chicago 3 2 in the seventh. And Kansas City leading Tampa Bay 5 2 in the eighth. Oh, Baylor got hit on the wrist, the hand. And Joe Maurer picking up the ball in case it was made contact with the bat, but now serious concern for Avila. It looked like he got hit in the left wrist. That fastball that came running in on Avila he is trying to get out of the way. The trainer down there with Avila. Pitch right here. He got on the underside of the wrist. We'll take a break. Twins making a pitching change here with two on and one out on the night.
Kenyon will run for him at first base, and Avila will go downstairs and almost assuredly will have the area of X ray before the Tigers leave town after the game. Put up some ice on it that it swelled up, but uh, Ryan Pena taking over at first base. Josh Renicky coming into the ball game. For Renicky, it's his 27th relief appearance. He last worked on Thursday, just a third of an inning. Austin Jackson, the batter, first and second one down. Well, the walks a little high for Renicky. 16 walks in 31 innings pitch, but able to get some strikeouts and hopefully a ground ball here. Walks have always been a concern for Renicky coming into the year. 158 in the third innings pitch and 81 walks. So roughly twice as many walks as you would like. And Renicky delivers ball one to Jackson. Two hits, two runs scored, and a two run home run in the fourth. Right down the middle. Renicky with the fastball. We just saw the slider change up. Slow curveball. To short right field. Armley comes in, makes the catch. Two down. And that'll bring up Torrey Hunter. Hunter with a two run home run back in the first inning a milestone home run for him his 300th since then a strikeout ground ball. And he sent a sinking line drive looked like it was going to land in front of Parmalee but Parmalee made a nice diving catch. For the second out of the seventh inning. Up and in ball one. Foul back one and one. I think earlier this year we were talking about how the uh, Angels might miss Torrey Hunter. I think it's safe to say he does not miss the Angels. <laughs> Angels having a terrible, terrible year. Eight games below 500, 10 games out of first. One and one. One and two. Well, one thing Tory would like, of course, is a World Series ring. I think that's one reason he picked Detroit, feeling that if he came and helped them out the way he helped the Angels last year, when he hit 313, hit 16 home runs, drove in 92 runs, put that bat in the lineup with Fielder and Cabrera and more a healthy Martinez, pretty nice. One and two. You read about news like this in the off season, and at least in this case, uh, it was for me. Wow, it's going to be Detroit. I knew he was going to play someplace. I didn't imagine it would be the Tigers. And then you step back and analyze it. What a great move for the Tigers! It's a tapper up the line, foul. A guy who's so widely respected, great in the clubhouse, still a productive hitter, still a great athlete. Two loves, two. He loves to play the game. Closest he's come to a World Series. 2002 when the Twins beat the A's in the first round of the playoffs. Lost in five games to the Angels. Who went on to win the World Series. Foul back still two and two. Did not get to the playoffs in the last three years with the Angels. Did get to the ALCS in 2009 with the Angels before the 
Angels lost to the Yankees. And another foul. Ooh, good swing right there by Torrey, fouling a straight back. Twins will not see the Tigers again until late August when they make a three game series. Go to Detroit. And then the who's, Tigers who, come who's, back who's here going in late to Detroit. September. Who's going to Detroit? You are. The Twins and I, yes, two and two. Breaking ball fouled back. It's not that I don't want to go to Detroit. It's just so happened that the schedule that that was made up by me didn't have me going there. You're critical of my shoes when you got hip boots on. Two and two. Well, you want something to happen here if you're a pitcher. Runners at first and second, and Fonte at second, Pena at first. Don't want to go 3 2, give him a head start. Torrey's fouled off some pitches. Another 2 2 pitch. Another foul. Nine pitches so far in this at bat by Renicky to try to get Tory Hunter out here. Five two strike fouls for Hunter in this at bat. And a sixth one. Type of an at bat, I suppose you can only have once you've had thousands of at bats. When Torrey was a rookie or even in his second year, he didn't have at bats like this. It got to two strikes, and the third strike was pretty soon to follow, but he's been around long enough and a much more intelligent hitter. Well, as a pitcher, too, you hate at bats like this. They go, this is the 11th pitch in this at bat. Bauer didn't block it, but the home plate umpire James Hoy did. And the front runner, Infante, advances to third base. That'll be a wild pitch charged to Renicky, allowing Infante to uh, go from second to third. For Renicky, his sixth wild pitch of the year. Three and two. Blasted to left center field. A ground rule double and another run will score. A great at bat for Torrey Hunter. That's why I hated pit at bats like that. You go 12 13 deep. You're going to make a mistake. He fouled off some pretty good pitches from Renicky. Looked like a breaking ball left up, and Torrey Hunter didn't miss this one. Hit it to left center, hit it hard enough to where that ball hit the track and then bounced into the bullpen area for a ground rule double. And Torrey Hunter picking up his third RBI of the ball game. And now you get to face Cabrera with two men in scoring position. Fouled away, one strike. The Tiger closer, Jose Valverde, has had about 10 minutes to warm up. He's probably squeezed in seven or eight warm up tosses out there. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> Another foul, two strikes. Right now it's a save situation. Valverde not warming up right now. And it might be that they will let it ride with Benoit who got the last out of the eighth inning.
foul back. This is where Cabrera is so tough with runners in scoring position. Leading the world right now with 69 RBIs. Two strikes. Well, Renicky cannot seem to get a swing and a miss here from either Hunter or Cabrera. Oh, he's throwing strikes, 19 pitches, 15 strikes. He'll try it again on 0 2. Cabrera, like he motioned for Jim Reynolds to rule that he didn't swing. Still one and two. So quick with his hands, Miguel Cabrera. Two and two. Good breaking ball right there, but Cabrera took it for ball two. Three and two. Mauer with a block. Josh Radicke has faced three batters a third of an inning and he might feel like he's already thrown three or four innings here. He's given up 14 foul balls on the 23 pitches he's thrown. Most of those of course coming with two strikes on the batter. And it's a full count now to Cabrera. First base is open fielder hitting next. And he finally struck him out. So Cabrera leaves two men in scoring position. The Tigers do add another run of the night.
It's 5 2 Detroit. Torrey Hunter's had a good day at the plate with a couple of extra base hits, three runs batted in. And our century link to what's next, the ninth inning for Joaquin Benoit. He got the final out of the eighth, and now he'll be asked to at least start the ninth. Yeah, Benoit, you know, was I got a little bit of save opportunity when he was with the Texas Rangers. The most saves he's had in the season was six with the Texas Rangers back in 2007. But he's always been kind of the eighth inning type guy. And I think with Del Verde, you know, struggling a little bit. Jim Leland, Jeff Jones, the pitching coach, going to see if Benoit can get the save here. Going through the middle of the Twins lineup, lineup Domit, Morno, and Arcia. It's a middle of the lineup that does not include Josh Willingham, who is not in the starting lineup. He's taken a cortisone shot. And uh, generally, after that, a player's left idle for a day or two. The Twins have an off day tomorrow. The hope is Willingham will be able to rejoin the starting lineup Tuesday night. Headed up the middle, backhanded nicely by Infante, and dug out at first by Martinez. Boy, nice play all around defensively by the Tigers. Infante having to go to his right, get that little short hop, and then all in one motion, get it over toward first base. And a little pick right there by Martinez. Nice exchange from the glove to the hand, and Martinez with a nice pick. Morno 0 for 3. A little bit low, ball one. A great crowd here today, 39,317 here on Father's Day. Second sellout of the year. And they've watched the Tigers. Right, a very strong start by Doug Fister to a three run lead here in the ninth. Three home runs hit in this game. Two two run home runs for the Tigers, a solo home run for the Twins. Fouled away, one and two. Side two and two. Punch to center field. Jackson over. Out number two. We'll bring up Arcia. Marcia, like so many Twins batters, 0 for 3. Yeah, not a lot of offense here. You can thank uh, Doug Fister for that. Carried that no hitter into the sixth inning. Dozier with the home run. Dozier has two of the three hits. For Benoit, this would be his fourth save of the year, his 17th career save. He's pitched in over 500 major league games. No, just outside, ball one. Arcia being pitched away, and even though he's 0 for 3, at least he has hit the ball to the opposite field. A couple of fly balls to left. Haven't seen him do what a lot of 21 year olds would do, and that is try to pull the ball and weakly a ground ball on the right side, and he takes a couple off the plate, 2 and 0. Arcia's gone back and forth, and of course, what he'd like to do is just be up here to stay. And not ever see Rochester, New York again. Probably asked to take a pitch right here. Twins need base runners. Pena sitting right down the middle of the plate. And he takes a strike. Two and one. Ooh. 
Ooh, call the strike two and two. Marcy didn't care for the call. Two and two. Twins down to their last strike. Checked his swing, did he? Strike three. Third base umpire Bob Davidson says the game's over. And the Tigers come to Minnesota and take two out of three. And the Twins' record on the road trip, or homestand rather, now 500. Yeah, you can see that Arcia went a little bit too far with that check swing. With three home runs hit in today's game, a total of $60,000 was raised for prostate cancer research. To make a donation, you can go to online to homerunchallenge.org. The Twins have hit one home run and struck out nine Tigers today. The Twins organization has donated $83,000 this week for prostate cancer research. So even though the Twins in this series lost the series two games to one, Tom Hanneman, a lot of money was raised, and now an off day tomorrow. Twins need to put together a winning homestand with a series win against the White Sox. That is the good news, Dick. Torrey Hunter, what a Father's Day for him as the Tigers take the series with a 4-2 win. We'll break it all down on Twins Live, including a conversation with Ron Gardenhire. We'll get his thoughts on the afternoon next.